Dude, that dude. Oh, he is getting into it. What's funny is he's got like a button up shirt and he's like, I don't give a shit what anybody thinks of me. They were performing as the band that they were going to become. If you asked that girl back then, like, what is your biggest, wildest dream? I promise you could have never, ever imagined the sheer scope and scale of like what she's become. I think that this trailer costs more than my life. <laughs> I always enjoy just impromptu gigs, just to folk music and some fans of rap music and some fans of soul music. Look at that crowd. He's so talented. All of this stuff hits way different in 2024. I've been going down this streak of like old rock music that I enjoyed in my youth and I continue to enjoy to this day. But um, but who do you like though? I like a lot of people, but specifically lately, it's been Audio Slave, Soundgarden, very Chris Cornell. But, but uh, a lot of people know that Audio Slave, the band, not Chris Cornell, the singer, but they they were in Rage Against the Machine. So it's the same band. I just did not know that. Singers. Yeah. So Chris Cornell left Soundgarden, which was huge, big mm -hmm. band. Uh, to Look, I'm not Amish. I know who Soundgarden <laughs> is. Do you know about rock and roll? Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> left Soundgarden. I was a weird to, homeschooler, to, but not that weird. <laughs> to pair up with the band from Rage Against the Machine. Mm -hmm. But I... Uh, came across this old video and it was their first public performance. And it reminded me of some of the, the public performances that like we've had years ago, like either me playing as a cover band or playing with Ilea, your sister. Um, it was nothing special, but it got me thinking about this whole concept of like, okay, all these like huge stars, big giant successes, they start somewhere just like everybody else. It, it proves to me this, this point that like, as long as your stuff is good, then if you keep at it, the success will come. But I pulled together a few examples of, uh, we've got Rage Against the Machine is the first one. I'll keep the other, the other two secret till we get there. Okay. But but go ahead and pull this up. I want to I want to dive into this. Alrighty. Oh I my gosh, this looks exactly like places we've played before. Oh for sure. Like it's the, just the some awning, some pavilion, and they just got like a somewhat of a stage that does not look very safe. Um, Man. Rock and roll, man. Look at those baggy pants, those oh, 90s. Yeah. So so go ahead with this. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah. Thanks for coming out today and here's Rage Against the Machine. 1991, October. Killing okay, in the name it's actually, of... that's pretty badass. Dude, there's nobody in the crowd. I know. So, so pause for a second. Skip, skip ahead to like uh, I don't know, like a minute and a half in for whatever reason. So they do kill it in the name of, but they don't. He doesn't actually sing it um, at all. What if they weird. didn't have words back then? Yeah, they may not have. They're, so there's two minutes. Have, so. Yeah, just go like right there. Let's just see what we get here. So this is their first mm -hmm. performance, supposedly. There's one person. His, uh, he goes like full, there's a lot more dancing in this than what, what you're used to out of a front man in typical rock. Yo, bring that kid in. Oh yeah. Dude, they're giving it their all though. So I don't know if you know much about Rage Against the Machine, but that, very, that very, girl right there is oh, probably one of them's it. girlfriends. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what it is. Dude, I used to jam out to this shit driving down my Jeep. Oh, yeah, driving to the beach before I go surfing or something. I would do it before I went mountain biking. Okay. So, Skip, uh, so so point here being that, like, these guys are giving it their all. This sounds, by the way, like, just like the album. Like, that like that rendition, like, that is what the their album performance, sounds like. Their performance, I mean, the audio sounds like shit because well, fine, it's but some, I'm saying their, their execution. Camcorder. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. not like that was a less than type show. Um, but like even if you skip skip like halfway through. Oh my goodness, this is a pretty long show. It's a 30 some minute. Yeah, they did several songs. So 30 minutes in, there's only four guys. The, right, <laughs> exactly. And then go to the end. Right there. So they've they've brought a crowd. 
Which okay. is, you know, obviously a good sign. About 11 people. About 11 people. Dude, that dude. Oh, he is getting into it. That guy's an early adopter for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Ahead of his time. What's funny is he's got like a button up shirt and he's like, I don't give a shit what anybody <laughs> thinks of me. He looks like one of the nerdier guys in the crowd for sure. Okay, so, so enough of this. Skip to uh, the, the next video of these guys. So we went fall of 91. And this is Pink Pop Music Festival 1993. So the span of, of two years or less. Okay. Um, go ahead and, uh, and... Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Two years later... Music is such a weird thing where, dude, you can be nobody on a Thursday and then, like, all of a sudden something blows. And Post Malone's story is the same way. He What's posted. That? Tell me that. Well, he, he posted something um, on SoundCloud and it was good. Yeah. It was Iverson or White Iverson or something like that. Uh, forgive me for not knowing it, but he posted it and then went to sleep. And then woke up and it had gone viral. And then like he was getting like DMs from like famous rappers. And he's like, oh shit, this happened. Wow. Uh, it, literally overnight. Literally overnight. Well, what's crazy is like we, um, uh, so like we talk about this a lot on the show, but Elia, my mm-hmm. wife, your sister, um, who is a country music artist, I play guitar for her. You do, you know, the majority of her production work. And um, we would play. We would do the same show like locally here where we live in like a, you know, s- small bar um, kind of just because. But it'd be like on a Thursday night and people would kind of be like, oh, yeah, OK, there's a band playing. Interesting. Like and then, you know, kind of. And they're on their phone. They'll be on their phone or their backs to you. Yes. And they're talking about something. And they're like. And then what's weird is same band, same songs, same execution. We'll go do it down on Broadway in Nashville. And people will just sit there, like they'll be like leaned in, and they'll just be like, "Oh my God, this is real music! Like this is Nashville music." It's like, well, first of all, it's not Nashville music; it's yeah, uh, you were from, it's from Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> but uh, it's it's like so domain specific. So sometimes it's interesting just to see you take the same thing uh, in a different world, in a different environment, um, and it frames it up properly to where um, you know it, it it can totally change how it's how it's received, but. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys, same thing, same music, same band. Look at the uh, crowd. Yeah. Come on. Here we go. This is this. Watch this one for a minute. This what, is what was this for. the guy? Did they are they the ones who brought in like that rap rock mixture that like Linkin Park came in or was that before? My opinion, these guys are way better oh. than than a lot of the other rap rock groups out there, partly because the music is so percussive. Mm-hmm. Like this trio as a band, mm-hmm. these guys are outrageous. It's it's so I mean it's heavy. Listen, the game God, they were so good. Always quite also. Out- what a great band name, Rage Against the Machine. Well, so there's Zach De La Rocha, this this singer, this guy. I have a feeling that we would not get along on a personal Probably, level. Yeah. But this, but I love, like his passion for what he's about. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like every single song is about fight. It's it's literally against. Ra- it's raging against the machine. Um, and the his, machine is obviously like government. The just the all way the things, power hierarchies, yeah. authority. Um, and uh, I'm assuming he's an anarchist. Uh, Not, that's well, he's a progressive yeah. for sure. He's a, he's an activist, but like. He is, I mean, he is not an opportunist. He means this stuff like uh, from top to bottom. I I just think he's like super, super duper um, uh, like behind every word that he says. And he's very smart. He's basically an historian. Like when he goes, when he talks, if you read the the lyrics that he goes through and talks about the things that have happened uh, throughout history and, and with our government and like this guy is ahead of his time. It's crazy. Yeah. Like the guy's brilliant and uh, all of this stuff hits way different. I feel like in 2024. Oh, I'm gonna have to go listen. So, so I, I, I've been listening to this music now that I listened to years ago. I'm telling you with the last few years that we've 
that we've uh, that we've had. It's interesting because it depends upon who the power is. When you're talking about take the power back, when you're talking about fighting, you know, the establishment and the elites and all this stuff, and the it's like, well, well, wait a second, like it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So, like, what's interesting is I think there's a lot of people that could listen to this music and come to two very separate conclusions, but feel very vindicated and supportive supported by by the music so like listen to this this is he is coming from a very specific side of of the aisle politically very progressive very you know he's an activist well music is supposed to be able to speak to the, to you yeah. and how you perceive it so i'm curious what the <clears throat> words are so this is this is know your enemy um great song again i love it but uh in 2024 just like I said, it hits different. Uh, at the end of the song, he does this thing where he's he's kind of he's kind of yelling. Well, he yells a lot, but uh, he says, "Yes, I know my enemies. They're the teachers who taught me to fight me. Compromise, conformity, assimilation, submission, ignorance, hypocrisy, brutality, the elite, all of which are American dreams." And then he goes on to say that over and over and over and over through wow. the end of the song. But I think both sides of the aisle could could identify with those words i think the people do the i don't think a lot of the leaders would no but i'm yeah i'm saying like i don't really care your political affiliation mm -hmm. you could probably read those those words and and feel like that's that's your anthem a little bit well i feel like a lot of people actually want the same things a lot of people disagree on how to get there mm -hmm. but what happens is the powers that be the elites actually get us fighting amongst each other about dumb things mm -hmm. they'll put it in the news they'll you know they'll make movies about things they'll exaggerate things and then what ends up happening is we're fighting over each, over that shit and we're not worried about oh they're robbing us blind they're you know the banking system the inflation from our government the laws they're putting in place our freedoms are going and they're all hiding it and disguising it as safety mm. you know yeah yeah, I don't know. I just... Uh, Interesting. Read that one more time. Yes, I know my enemies. They're the teachers who taught me to fight me. Compromise, conformity, assimilation, submission, ignorance, hypocrisy, brutality, the elite, all of which are American dreams. Dude, if you even think about the school system, it is basically yeah. just teaching kids to submit, sit, be quiet, and do these boring tasks. Why? What's wait, important to wait, do? Wait, do you it? mean like corporate America? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? <laughs> it's exactly. It's a feeder for there's, corporate America. There's a reason why I do not work well in corporate America or authority doesn't, the normal structure of authority does not work on me is because I did not go to school that way. I was homeschooled. I was raised in a way to where it's just like when you grant someone authority, they deserved it from my opinion, not just- They earn it. They earn it. Yeah. Yes. Versus just like, oh, that's, that's the boss. That's why I'm not afraid of being around like, like mega stars or any type of artist, actors. I just it never bothered me. They're oh, just a human. Oh yeah, like I mean, I hang out with mega stars too all the time. Just so we're clear. Um, <laughs> I'm just bother, saying I've been around a me. lot of famous people in my life, and only one person I've ever gotten nervous isn't that because that was because they were um, an actress on Star Trek, <laughs> and I was an, I'm a nerd. I I really am. Anyways, um, side, side tangent. Yes. Um, I just thought I'd share that. I thought it was interesting. I was like, as I listen to stuff, I'm like, man, this resonates differently mm -hmm. than, than I think the original intent, but that's rage against the machine. Uh, go to the next one if you would. Yeah. So before we go on to this next one, this, um, the point of these are, I think just to show like last podcast, we talked about failures and success and like, just keep going. These guys could have been discouraged and we've seen it before, man, how, uh, an artist will show up. There's only 20 people here. I'm just going to just play. Just phone it in. It's like, dude, give it everything, you know? Uh, any, anyways. Yeah, and they play? did. Like that that entire performance, that 30-minute or whatever performance uh -huh. on that pavilion, it looked just like what was happening at that music festival. Yeah. Like they gave it 100%. Like the, the final song, he was like screaming until his voice wasn't wasn't there anymore, and he was like on his knees, and he had like thrown the mic stand. Just like he was being who... They were they were performing as the band that they were going to become. Like there was there was no different. It was sort of like uh, what do they say? Wear the um, dress for the job you want, mm -hmm. not the job you have. They were dressing for the job they wanted for sure. But I don't think they were dressing like it was well, for real. 
I think I think sometimes like that, if nobody's there, it's practice. All right, give it everything. This mm. is a, a on stage practice. If there's twelve people here, give it all. Yeah. Uh, and also those twelve people that are watching, oh my lord, they become fans. Mm -hmm. Like you gave me all that, and it's like that one dude in the red shirt who was freaking <laughs> out in the button up yep. who just got off work. He, he's like he he felt that music. <laughs> like he's like he yeah. Was, he had some rage. Huh? He had some rage, and I and I love it. All right, so th who's this? So go to. Oh. Go to uh, 44 seconds in. Okay, 44. Taylor Swift, 44 seconds So this in. is 2005, as it says. Yeah, go ahead. Short clip. Record. Oh, my gosh. She's so young. We should be. I'll bet she's beautiful. That girl talks about. And she's got 2005? All right, so that's it. I think we... So as as he said, he, she had come to Nashville last year, um, in at this at this time. But like you watch that clip and you can play it again if you want. But you see someone who is clearly still like perfecting their craft, um, still honing. I think even dude, that's a little girl. How to strum and play? <laughs> how to how to like, you know? Um, there's some notes there that were sure. like okay. Play play it again, if you would. Yeah. Sorry. And it is a girl. You're right. This is almost right. 20 years ago. Of her first big record. Everything that we should be. I'll bet she's beautiful. That girl talks about. And she, she looks uncomfortable and she looks like she's reading lyrics. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. She's, she's good. She's clearly talented and she's good and she's very young here. But part of the, the, the bar that I'm measuring against is what I want you to show now, which is the Taylor Swift of today. This is the trailer for her Eras tour. So again, look at the contrast from where she came from to where she's Jeez. at now. Jeez. What is that, 50,000 people? <laughs> so in 19 years? This has been the most right. extraordinary experience of my entire life. Don't give up, people. <laughs> right? Gosh, the production value. To go on a little adventure together, and that adventure is going to span 17 years of music. How does that sound? She has 17 years of music. Yeah, that's crazy. Welcome to the acoustic set. I mean, this the the production of this is incredible. I think that this trailer costs more than my life <laughs> by a factor of 20. Yeah. Dude, what's so weird? When I was talking to some people in Nashville. Um, I was talking with them and they, uh, we're trying to set up a meeting and it had to do with a movie that I'm doing this summer or this fall. And the guy was like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm late. And I was like, it's all right, buddy. What, what's going on? He was like, well, Taylor's in town and it's just crazy right now. <laughs> it was, he was in Nashville. I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Taylor's in town. Taylor's in town. Okay. And I was like, well, what does that mean? He goes, everything's open. Everything's closed. Nothing's normal. The roads are blocked. Every house is booked. He's like, and I'm just so excited to see the show. He's a 50 year old man. I was like, oh, she's like a, a wave that overtakes a town. Yeah. Yeah, dude. She's, uh, people she can hate on her. Redefined what it, oh. what it means to be a star. And, and what's crazy, you know, back to that original, mm -hmm. original video in 2005, like, she, if you asked that girl back then, like, what is your biggest, wildest, most outrageous dream for who you could become as an artist? Like who is, what's the star that you see yourself being? She could have, I promise you could have never, ever imagined the, the sheer scope and scale of like what she's become no. now. Um, but her, her transition from, from country into from like pop singer, was so country. good. It yeah. was, it, it didn't feel like, Ooh, I'm now the bad girl. I'm going to be singing like this inappropriate music. It was fun. Mm. It was great. Well, it part was, of, part of, I think what's, what's so gosh, great. She's so young. Yeah. What's so great about Taylor Swift's career though, is that it has been the, the story itself self is one of writing and rewriting and mm. like of evolving and changing. And you sort of been able to watch over the last almost two decades where she, um, started as this young, uh, you know, kind of innocent singer songwriter type of vibe. Right. And now she's this explosive pop star. And that... her fans are legitimately fanatics. Yeah. Like, yeah. We did one podcast on Taylor Swift and we get more comments about that than, I mean, just the in depth, 
long ass paragraphs yeah. of comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Swifties are something else. They're gonna like, probably they'll probably be all over. They us, but. love her. Yeah. Like, like you know, some people are like, yeah, I I love you know Toby Keith. I love this, but it's like passive. You talk about like brand loyalty. Oh, all she has to do is like, hey guys, I have this album. It's purple. They'll buy it. Oh, and also it's in yellow. They'll buy it. And then, oh, it's also in, you know, I wore this dress on the cover. It's all the same album. Taylor Swift could be like, go on her Instagram and be like, okay, Swifties, uh, what I'm planning for next week is we're going to overthrow the country of Ghana. And uh, <laughs> they would be like, it's already <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, we'll have it done before next week. Yes. It's, and uh, they'll do it with her music playing in the background. That, that would actually be, that's, there's a music video idea for you, Taylor. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Uh, so again, just, just summarizing so far point being like, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, this is, this is Ed Sheeran. So it kind of relates to Taylor Swift. People may know they have a close relationship. Jump ahead to 54 seconds. I think it is. Yep. Yep. He is already, I mean, he, so before dude, you play he's though. such a pop star, like same thing with Taylor, like 50,000 people show up. Yeah. But this is supposed to be, um, this is early on in his career. He's like playing in a train station, uh, like street performing. Um, there's obviously like stuff set up. So he's got some, some uh, production, some, yeah, like, uh, some degree of early success here, but, um, it, it says like, discover new music. Yeah. Listen to what he says when they, when they interview him here in a second. He already sounds so much better than when he first started. Oh. You know, obviously a lot of people can be like quite bored and irritated waiting on a, in a busy station. It's good to uh, get some. Look at that Blackberry. While you're waiting. So basically, pause for a sec. Okay, so two things. So really first of all, my, my music doesn't really hit everyone. Well. It, well, not not then, maybe. But it does. It, it does. Uh, it ends up that way. You know, it's kind of funny to like look back and hear him say that. But also, he's, he's a not. If you look at him, he is not what you would. No. Like, I'm not going to bash his looks, but like, he's not like. Um, pick someone who's like, oh yeah, he's going to be a, a mega star. Like uh, maybe the guy from Maroon Five. You look at him, you're like, yeah, yeah he's tall, slender, he's good looking. Of course, you know, girls are going to love him. Um, but like, he's just so good. And he was relentless. Are you talking about Adam Levine? Is that who you're That's, talking about? That's, yeah, yeah. Like, he's a good-looking guy. You look at yeah. him, you're like, of course, yeah, he's going to be, um, you know, he's going to be a pop star. Yeah. One day, Adam Levine will be famous. <laughs> yeah. he'll, be, he'll be a big star. I'm, he's got But what, what I'm saying takes. is he's more popular than Adam Levine is. There's been a lot of times where people Are have, you trying to start a, a feud? I mean... A Sheeran Levine Sheeran feud? Sheeran Levine. Well, I mean, he's, his fans are way more into it. Uh, that still sounds like you're trying to fuel yes, the I flames would be, of dude, the feud. Dude, I'd be so fine with that. That'd be fine, yeah. You're, you're fueling feud mm -hmm. flames. I'm just saying, having been in the music industry, I've seen it to where people are like, well, there, she's great, but she's not good looking enough, so she's going to be a writer. Or he's great, but he's <laughs> just, no, he's not good looking enough to be a front man. I've yeah. heard that before, and they've made them backup singers. We've seen it throughout, you know, you look at even yeah. watch movies. You're just like, oh, he's just not good looking enough for the front guy, you know? Well... Um, I just think he's got some wild hair, for one thing. Well, it's like those... Yeah, I agree. But, What's that one band with the two? The guys, they look like twins. They were African-American. Uh, they had long braids, and they ended up being fake music. Um, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, what's their name? The Something Boys? The Oh, now it's going to bother me. Let me look that up. It was a great documentary on it. Is this... Uh, these are, like, pretty new? No, no, no. They're in the 80s. Oh, I thought you were talking um, about uh, they were there, so let me let me let me pull this up. Um while you're doing that, I, I just wanted to comment. I thought it was funny that the guy basically said the guy they interviewed before this essentially said, like, yeah, uh it's really boring otherwise here, so we might as well have like something to listen to. <laughs> uh and then and then for him to say actually like push push play, let it play for like uh ten more seconds or something here. Oops. I just skipped Oops. to the next one. Give me a second. I'm new with this people. Because he talks about how like his music's not really for everyone, and then he kind of talks about how it's there's different styles. So go to like, yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. People can be like quite bored and irritated waiting on a in a busy station. It's good, good quality. Some good quality he needs a bottle of water. My music doesn't really hit everyone. 
Um, otherwise, I'd be a very lucky man. Hey, past Sharon, you did it. it should hit some people today. Buddy, don't hopefully. worry. If there are some fans of folk music and some fans of rap music and some fans of... And so talented. In positive um, for sex uh, Folk music, rap music, and soul music is uh, kind of what he's... Oh, that's his brand. Like yeah. that, that is what he stayed true to that. And he's All having a British that. accent that's so heavy, you're like, what'd you, what'd you say? But this, this <laughs> is great. He's so talented. Like you watch him perform. Have you ever watched like one of his concerts? Well, that's the that's the next video. Oh, okay. But we can. Did, were you gonna? Oh, well, show all us I was gonna say, Millie Vanilli oh, was okay. a band from the '80s. Good looking guys. They could dance really good. Well, the guy who sang was just like a average looking guy, and they're like, well, "You're the just." So what they did was they had the guy who could sing, record the parts, and had these guys lip sync live. Really? Oh yeah, Millie Vanilli. It was it was '80s music. Went straight to the top. So, so the actual vocalist was like, was in the back. No, so they just all just lip synced so, the entire every single so show. The vocalist wasn't even on stage. Never. He, they were just like, all right, guys, you look the part, but we're not gonna have you record the album. I recommend. Weird. There's there's a documentary out on HBO about it. Um, oh man, is it? I don't remember what it is. I'll have to look it up later. But dude, it was such the, a... That whole concept is so strange. Like so, It's one thing to like lip sync your own words, mm -hmm. but to have... Somebody else. Somebody else actually featured yeah. as the, the primary vocal. And they sold and then, millions of albums. And it's crazy. this one dude um, who kind of orchestrated the entire thing. He was like, right, these guys are dancers. They look good. Um, they looked apart. The and like the girls, of course, just loved him. And they had this other guy be the background vocals for it. And he came out and was like, I'm not getting paid enough for this. There millions of albums. I need my money. So he went out, went to the news. Nobody believed him. And what's funny is when the band came out later and they were like, okay, okay. It was actually fake. We're sorry. So what we're going to do is here's the real singers. They did it again. The next album was other people singing. Are they you had serious? fake from it. Yes. They had, what's funny is the backup singers were two white girls and they replaced them with two black girls. Literally, it's just like the guy was a ripoff artist. Good music, good writer, good producer. That's crazy. You got to watch the documentary. I'll, I'll All right. I will. That it's, sounds interesting. It's just like, and these poor guys were just, they got the fame. They were like French, African-American or whatever it was. And so they barely spoke the language. They blew up. Well, they're America. not African-American if they're French. I know. I'm confused about they're what They're African-French? They're, dude, they're just two Are French Are they of African guys. descent? Um, yes, that works. Yeah. African descent, but either, either way, um, yeah, Just trying to figure it's, out, it's you know. pretty sad. One of them end up getting really hooked up in the drugs after it all fell apart and his life, you know, just went downhill and one guy's happily married and, uh, kind of hides his identity that he was part of Millie Vanilli because they had death threats on him. Like, like this is weird. The fans we gotta, were, we gotta, we gotta watch that. And then, and then yeah. we'll, do, we'll do a breakdown. Cause that's uh, interesting. We gotta watch that documentary. All right. So what's this? Oh my gosh. So this is Ed Sheeran Ed. now ish. This is like in his mathematics tour. We'll watch this for a few minutes. So it's basically what he did on the last one. And he's a big fan of that 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. He said it works. You press record like that, and then you press play, and it plays back, and then you can loop on top of it like this. This type of stuff is so fun at a concert when there's so much like lip syncing and stuff. It's like, do it live. Look at that crowd. And this became an entire genre too. Like, like for for oh, a yeah. decade, like people have done this looping thing, and it was huge for a while. It's kind of like tapered off maybe, but look at that. He made it huge. Him and a, and a few other key artists. <laughs> Just producing live. This is crazy, man. What's interesting is though, not only did he just keep pursuing it, but he always was trying to get better and better and make the music better and better. Mm -hmm. um, he teamed up with good like friends who were also writers that they could co-write with. And I don't know what that loop station is though, like. Those buttons are gigantic. I think those are some like aftermarket add-ons or whatever, so we can just stomp them. But I think you can. But the whole it. thing is gig. Well, yeah, sure. But the whole thing is, I've, I've just it's enormous. Hmm. He's good though. Like when That's he starts. That's cool. In, the screen it looks like it's uh, a record. Yeah. Oh, it's actually moving too. Yeah. It's like one of those moving walkways in an airport. That's so cool. 
They have to set that up every place they go, probably. Oh, yeah. I'll bet you he comes with like three or four semis. Probably 12. But like, this stuff's good, man. Like, he's so good. He's, uh. So, not only is he talented, but like, he's kind of. He's a little bit of a revolutionary um, in that he kind of picked a path that was a little bit unique with the, mm -hmm. with kind of his looping and and again the combination as he said of of, um, of soul uh, rap and uh, what else did he say um, folk folk yeah folk but and, also uh, the way he speaks is percussive yeah, yeah so yeah. when he does change up the rhythm. And it goes into more of an offbeat or smooth or mm -hmm. on an eighth or yep. whatever. It it's more impactful. Yeah. And it's just then 100%. when he goes back into the percussive, it's like it makes you pay attention to what you're listening to. And I, I think brilliant. Maybe it's partly because of how he builds these tracks, like with a with a looper or whatever. Mm -hmm. But his guitar playing can be very percussive oh, at yeah. times. So he like because he's it needs to be so he totally gets that aspect of the the music. But um, he picked a path that was kind of unique and. Uh, stuck with it and kind of cornered that that not only that um segment of the market but exploded into like totally mainstream and was huge everywhere and uh like I, I just wonder for all three of these instances if there's ever these moments where these guys like look back at at you know day one and just think like man could i have ever imagined uh where i've ended up could I have imagined that I would get there with Taylor Swift? Like I said, I don't think no way in hell did, mm -hmm. did like 15 year old Taylor Swift actually think because nobody was doing back then what Taylor Swift is doing now. Like you could look at like, I don't know, Michael Jackson, or you could look at like Prince or you could look at like some of these, you know, gigantic stars. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that. Well, her case was really smart because I feel like she wrote for young girls and how they felt yeah. and they grew up with her. So yeah, now if you yeah, look yeah. at all the girls <laughs> now she still writes uh, yeah. sometimes like yeah. young girls but 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 at the same time if you look at a lot of the women they're like my wife's age but it's like they grew up with her they mm. were 15 when she was 15 yeah. and they loved yeah, her music right. and so as her music matures the people matured and it's brilliant and I feel like with even Ed Sheeran I think it did the same thing a lot of people found his music when they were 14 15 and they kind of grew up with him and now they have money to go <laughs> buy every album or Stream it a million times, or in his case, billion times. Or go back down memory lane. Like now, it's kind of like yeah. a nostalgia thing. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go see that show uh, after seeing him, you know, ten years ago. And like, I think this is a great example, even for like, uh, like companies. A lot of times, when you're Jeff Bezos or Apple in a garage or a small room, yes, they may have had funding in the beginning. It's but it all started with an idea, and they believed in themselves. When everybody else is saying this is a dumb idea, and it kind of goes back to what we're saying. Last last time, it's like um, the quantity of their opinions should not outweigh the quality of yours. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that you can actually do something and and you want to do it, it's not just for that end game. You know, it's like, well, if I'm not playing in front of 50,000 people, it ain't worth it. It's like, no, you do it because you love it. And then you end up being successful and you end up making money. Then that to me is what it should be about. Mm -hmm. It's like those people who set off to make a lot of money. Like if we would have said... We're going to do this podcast for one year. And if we're not making five, 10 grand a month, we're quitting. It's like, no, we're, we're kind of in it to, to just for the long haul. I love the podcast. We love to talk. We love the research. It's better for us. We meet new people. We're traveling everywhere. These conversations will be happening anyway and do happen anyway. We All just the don't time. record them. Well, our uh, wives were like, all right, guys, just save it for the podcast. We didn't have a podcast for like two years. Yeah. And we've been. We should have. We'd be so far along. Oh, I know. We should have started this. We'd be halfway to Taylor Swift by now. <laughs> uh, Eras tour, Taylor Swift. Yeah. All right. Anyway, this is a good point. I mean, this this podcast will probably get copy strict a dozen times. Put comments to say, um, please don't. You know. I, don't overall, do it, though. YouTube. Yeah. Let us know um, what your favorite bands are, and 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 share or, or favorite like journeys yeah. to, of, of a band. Like I like I think of like Foo Fighters, which mm -hmm. is a great story of like, you know, like Dave Grohl originally doing all the mm -hmm. songs, you know, and then I think it was like a wasn't it Kansas? I think that did that did that i think it was kansas it was one guy who recorded ever all the instruments in his basement um if you have also like links to a video that is like someone on their first day performing <laughs> like share it in the comments <laughs> i want to see it if it's like 
if it's like Ed Sheeran's first show, I want to see that. Um, I heard some of his early on recordings. No, I've heard some of his early on recordings, and they weren't great. I mean, he even played them on a show and was just like, "Here you go," and everybody's like, "Oh," he's like, "Yeah, was it great?" But I kept practicing. <laughs> I mean, when people like grimace and groan yeah. at your, your early music, that's not good. But um, but he's, that's why I said earlier, he was he believes in that 10,000 hour rule. You got to put in your 10,000 hours. You got to pay the dues to yourself, to your talent and devote it to get better. And then eventually it's like, oh, this is easier. Now I can move on to the business side of things or to expanding my talents. But yeah, yeah. Well, good, on, good point, man. On that note, yeah, uh, I hope this inspires you guys maybe a little bit. It's it's been a little bit inspirational to me, and uh, and hopefully you. I'm gonna totally can. listen to Rage Against the Machine in my headphones while I'm driving down the road tonight on the way home. Well, you're supposed to. I think first off, that's illegal. I think you need to. <laughs> really, it's illegal to with headphones in your head. I I think so. Yeah. What? I mean, people get by with like AirPods because technically you can hear the ambient sound, but. I don't know if you can like drive your vehicle with actual headphones. Not to do what they told you. <laughs> Not to do what they. Yeah. Cop pulls me over. You're just going to be driving like 112. Like <laughs> My Jeep just falling apart. Well, on that note, good, good idea. Uh, seeing someone from the beginning all the way to the end is wonderful. And I know these are pop stars and they're billionaires. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Taylor Swift is a billionaire uh, or at least worth she a billion. Be. She will be. Um, and I know people have a tendency to want to hate on rich people and successful people, but at the same time, I want everybody to be successful, whatever that is, whatever that dream is. Just, I, uh, just all of us be just Taylor Swift's walking around. Well, mm, I don't think that it's would possible. Go. Let's it's, do it. Let's all just do it. I don't want to pay, wear a wig. <laughs> I don't mean, yeah, no, well, uh, no offense, and, but you're no Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying like in terms of wealth and I agree. success, I agree. And also like, someone's dream doesn't have to be, well, I'm going to be a billionaire on my failure. It might also just be a good person, you know, financially free, able to travel, a wonderful family, happy for God's sakes, focus on trying to be happy, not trying to be wealthy. I think that's a lot of our problems. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, well, all right. You want to take us out? Thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Comment below. Uh, let us know. I, I want to see your favorite performance of your band from the early days. I think it'd be really cool. Wait, from their band? From from a listener's band? No, well, I mean, they can do that too, but I'm talking about like, <laughs> like say your, your, your Foo Fighters first show or I don't know, whatever your favorite band is, now show us the first, the first, your favorite video. I wish I had prepared someone really specific that I want people to go do homework on. I mean. But I don't have it. No. All right. Guys, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Yes. Bye-bye.